So what do you call yourself? Welcome. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Hey. Hey, what can I do for you this fine day? This is your destiny. Hot, hot, hot. Right now. Welcome to the Los Angeles Show. Kick it. Come on in and enjoy yourself. Right now. We gon' party like no one else. I mean, I know you know how to work this microphone, girl. <laughs> you hear me? What's up? It's your girl, Tangela, and today in the hot seat on the tan line, we have none other than the world-renowned, the beautiful, talented one, Jackie Goucher. How are you? I am amazing, and it's a pleasure to be here. Look, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. You came today equipped with some of the most beautiful women on your team, yes, and they have been vouching and super excited to get you in the capital city, because tonight there is a free field trip, free field trip that's taking place with United Christian Faith Ministries um, right there at 9229 North Ridgewood Drive. Now, the doors swing open at 6 o'clock. Event starts at 630. So don't you show up at 745 talking about what's going on. <laughs> you know, and tonight at United Christian Faith Ministries, we know that they're going to present an overcomer's testimony, an evening of music, a powerful testimony, and audience discussion with the one and the only Jackie. Now, tell me a little bit about your experience, because I've seen like you've been touring forever with some of the world's greatest. And I was like Elton John, Michael Jackson, Patti LaBelle, Quincy Jones, and she's touching the microphone in Baton Rouge. I think we won't show up. <laughs> Girl, listen, how did you know that the world of entertainment was a calling on your life? Um, I, I learned it gradually. I mean, music has always been a part of my life. My, my mother's a musician, my family's musical, so I grew up with music. Right. And in high school, I started taking piano lessons. But as I, the Lord placed me in these different positions, you know, I've I, uh, been a worship leader in my church for 34 years now. And it was after I got there that I began to understand my calling. I love that. And you know, when we hear about people in their highs, no one ever has the level of transparency to tell us the things that they've been through, mm -hmm. knowing that that can help people to get through those right. dark moments as well, right. especially when they can't seem to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But tonight with United Christian Faith Ministries, we're here to celebrate you and of course, all of God's glory that he has brought you through. But you're going to share some of those tougher moments. Yes, I am. That the test became testimony. Yes, I am. I mean, when we talk about that, what does that look like in a nutshell? One, okay, so I am now 35 years sober from a cocaine addiction. Congratulations. So while I was having my sons, I was in the midst of addiction. Wow. And and I'll, I'll tell the story again tonight, but this is one of, the, one of my favorites because God is so amazing. Um, October 17, 1985, I was pregnant with my second child, D-Smoke. Everybody knows him as D-Smoke now, but I was yeah. pregnant with him. I did a session for the movie, The Color Purple. And then when I got the money from that session, I couldn't even, I was trying to be sober, but the money, you know, stirred up the cravings. And I just, you know, mm -hmm. I went and I got high. I was seven months pregnant. And mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm gonna go get high. It's the last time I'm gonna get high. I'm gonna be, you know, get ready to give birth. But right. I happened to start having contractions that day. Wow. And, and I had just gotten high that morning. And that night at eight o'clock, I gave birth to Daniel. And I knew enough about God to pray yeah. and ask him, you know, to, to forgive me, first of all, and to bless my child in spite of me. Absolutely. And he, girl, he went way beyond, you know, just forgiving me. Just, not only did he protect the baby in my womb, yeah. but if you look at D-Smoke now and you see the person <laughs> that he has turned out to be, yeah. that's nothing but God's grace and mercy. God's grace and the mother's prayer and the yes, fact that you listened to his voice in that moment. Yeah. Because, you know, that was God's protection on you. It was. It, it, it absolutely. Was. You know, and we always want to say, I. We're not smart enough to make any of this stuff up at all, you know, and God has brought you through so many things. And to know that you have the belief and the transparency to share that, I mm -hmm. applaud you for that. Okay. And we're looking forward to tonight at United Christian Faith Ministries. Dr. Bosler don't want to get on the microphone to talk to us today. It's fine. I'm going to put her on blast later. Now, oh, wait a second. Now, you'll be hosting the panel tonight, right? I will. Okay. Now, what time is the yeah. panel discussion? 
So we're having a Q and A Q and A end of it, and so it will be. It starts at six thirty. Okay. We want to definitely be there for the entire thing, but we you have a chance to ask questions and okay. everything. Okay. Because you know I got questions that need answers, and of yes. course we'll have more <laughs> details coming up for you in a second. But I want you to log on, get all the information. You can follow them on their Instagram, United Christian Faith Ministries, and of course you can always contact two two five nine two seven eleven sixty one for more details. Now I'm gonna ask you to stick around for a little while. Is that of okay? Course, that's fine. All right, you keep it locked tonight. Cause it'll work if I cut the mic off. <laughs> we were just laughing off mic about, you know, she's got her te technology game up and I'm over here talking to the microphone is cut off. Hey, I mean, red usually means stop, but here it means go, right? Mm, slow. I have these slow moments. And I know that tonight you'll be sharing your testimony, but um, some of the things that you shared within the pages of this book, break that down for us. Jackie Goucher, Raising Kings. Right. I have had the privilege of raising three of the most amazing young men that you can ever meet. You know, and I I don't I can I think only mothers, women who have given birth can relate to what I'm saying. The the responsibility, the awesome, you know, uh responsibility of raising and giving birth and creating these people. And I like to tell parents, and this is what the book about it book is about. It's about my story, my journey uh -huh. of motherhood and how I was able to overcome the addiction and and my husband was in prison for seven years, and I was a single parent to these three boys. Wow. And so, wow. That, yeah, the book talks about that. And um, and I have a lot of parenting tips in here. That's good. You know, a lot of people will need the help and really don't know how to say, this is what I need the help in. Right. Um, right. There, there's somewhat, I don't like people in my business. You know, especially here in our culture, we just don't, you know, I don't want yeah, people in my business. So, um, being that you're opening the book and mm -hmm. saying, hey, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. As a single parent that's fighting addiction, did you have a support system around you? Absolutely, absolutely. My mother, and, and it wasn't that large at the time. It was my mother and my Aunt Melinda because I didn't trust other people with my babies. Right. You know, my, whenever I had to go work or go tour or whatever, I, and I didn't tour very long, it was either my mom or my Aunt Melinda who, they were my support system. And then I eventually, and uh, I had a roommate named Stella Payton. She's in the book too, and she's actually going to be here today because she's from down here. So that's yeah, awesome. I, yeah. I had a, I had a great su support system. God first yeah. was my support, and and um, without Him, you know, I, He is He is the core of my message. Absolutely. God is the core of my message. My connection with Him, His grace and His strength in yeah. me allowed me, and He and His wisdom, you know, because He was giving me wisdom that, as I look back in hindsight, it's like, wow, I knew I didn't really know how I knew that, you know, mm -hmm. how I was aware of, you know, how I was the architect of my son's life yeah i who they became as men was totally up to me well let's talk about that right so here it is you're the single mother with a very small support group um while you're raising three sons mm -hmm. three kings yes ma'am you have issues that you're dealing with how did that impact them seeing that mom had these issues were you able to hide it was that like an a, a conversation that we had at dinner were they asking questions what did that look like well, you know what? I never hid anything from my sons. They they had a front row seat yeah. to all my struggles. They knew that, of course, they they were one, two, and three when their father went to prison and eight, nine, and 10 when he came home. Mm -hmm. And so that was a daily uh, conversation and a daily prayer. And I always tried to paint him in the greatest light, you know, for them awesome. so they would yeah. respect their father in spite, of, in spite of the fact that he was in prison. And one of the things that Daniel always, D Smoke always shares, you know, in his music and in his, when he's talking, we used to pray every night. You know, we they had this prayer. And they led the prayer. I taught them how to pray. And at the end of each prayer, every night, they would say, God, please bring our dad home from jail. Yeah. That was the end of the prayer. Yeah. So they had a front row seat. They saw my struggles. You know, the, the, the days that I was, had difficulty and I would cry and just, you know, be stressed out or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Daniel, D. Smoke, we have this special relationship because even as a 9 and 10 year old boy, he had the presence of mind and the wisdom to encourage me. Yeah, the maturity was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that they, I never, I could never hide anything, and I would never try to hide it from them. They understand, you know, they understood the difficulty, and they also understand that it was the grace of God yeah. that brought us through that. And and to see how He has brought you through, and God is so faithful. You know, it's yes. like He heard your prayers; they did not fall upon deaf ears. Right. And to see where you are today, knowing that you're sharing your testimony, but then your three sons are living testimonies as of a mother's love, the commitment, and God's grace. And raising kings is available now. Don't bootleg it. I need you to go get your copy. <laughs> I'm about to buy my copy now. I hope that's not the last one you have with you because I need it. 
Um, and it needs to be autographed, or I don't want it. <laughs> security, security. Yes, my this is don't let her leave until she signs this book. So, I mean, because from page to page, it was there a chapter within the book that you said, ah, maybe I should leave this one out? What, what was uh, that? Uh, well, yeah, there's some stuff that I did leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's no chapter in the book. Everything in here is intentional. Okay. Yeah, I left I out like some it. of the stuff. Because like you can't it. tell the whole story. No, 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 no. Some of the things, you know, just have to leave on God's ears and, right. and just leave it there at the altar. But, you know, if we want more information and to keep up with you and the wonderful things that you are doing, um, how can we keep up with you on your social media? You can go to my website, which is JackieGouche.com, J-A-C-K-I-E-G-O-U-C-H-E.com. Uh, I am Jay Gouche on Instagram. Okay. And Jackie Gouche on Facebook. I got you. Say less. And I want you to think of this as an extension of your office. So whenever you come out here, deep down south, we'll get you some snowballs because it's 103 <laughs> on the dash. And Jackie brought the heat with her. Uh, <laughs> some of this crawfish and toupee. Is it still crawfish and toupee season? Yeah. We were talking about that in the car. I've never had it. So what? I, I got to have some before. What? We're done. <laughs> Girl, okay, I, I got you, say less. Um, and I want you to think of this as an extension of your office. You know, Dr. Bosper, she makes one call that's going to happen. I'm a smoke signal, just pull up on me <laughs> whenever you need to. Um, and I know you have more work to do, so I'm going to let you chase the sun or let the sun chase you. But either way, get after it. I love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Oh, I love you too. Thank you so much for having me.